right, everybody. Welcome to Fans Down South. I'm John Miller, and with me is Steve Jinx. Hello, and John, and everybody out there in Radio Land. And we have completed the first weekend of college football. We have, man. We definitely have. It's been a fun one. Yes. Lots of stuff to talk about, John. Lots of exciting stuff to talk about. We'll get right into it. We're gonna. We got plenty of talk around the SEC, and uh, especially Auburn and Alabama on the way. Yeah. But the big story. The big story over mm-hmm. the weekend, of course. South Alabama Jags beat Mississippi State. What? <laughs> That's right, man. The Jags. Yeah. I was excited because me and my wife, we were watching it. We're both alums of uh, South Alabama. Mm-hmm. And, we're, you know, we're watching the game. And, and uh, you know, I'm kind of in and out of it a little bit because, yeah. you know, the first half, even though they were staying in the game, it didn't really look like they were going to win. You still had that feeling. Yeah. Like, oh, it's like, still uh, State yeah, this is the Jags. Right. And then the second half, man. There were a couple of really big plays, and you and you began to think, "Oh, this is possible. This is it could possible." Happen. Yeah, and they had this really long drive from their own one yard line mm-hmm. to score a touchdown, which was awesome. Wow. And uh, and you began to think, you know, this is possible. They could they could actually win this game. And then they drove down the field there in the last uh, minute or so mm-hmm. and uh, scored the go ahead touchdown. And then uh, and then they kicked back off, of course. And and Mississippi State, you know they, you know they for a minute it looked like they were gonna you know win the game because they they moved right down the field, yeah. got into field goal position, yeah. and uh, got everything set up for what looked like it was gonna be a chip shot, and he missed it. Wow! And it was just it was just so exciting to see that, and and uh, and I'd actually because I had a wedding to shoot, mm-hmm. I was getting ready uh, during that last drive. You late for the wedding? I was getting ready for the wedding. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so, I, and I was thinking, oh, they're gonna they're gonna get this field goal. It's gonna be over. And I'm uh, and so I'd left the room, yeah. but I turned on my uh, my phone to the uh, the Our Heart Radio app. I was listening on Jag, the Jag That's FM. Right. The Jag FM. And uh, if and, you were in Jackson, you can listen on Bama one hundred six point one. There you go. Yeah. yeah that's right. And uh, but and I and and they they made the call, and I just couldn't believe it. It was awesome. And, and how did you hear about it? I heard about it when yeah. I got – actually, I missed – I was at home getting ready to go watch football. Mm-hmm. I had talked my wife into a full day of football watching at my dad's house. And so <laughs> we got down there, and uh, I, I missed it. I thought it was going to be a later game in the day. I wasn't paying attention when it actually started. And I got there, and my dad said, well, Jags got – Jags beat Mississippi State. And I was like, are you kidding me? There ain't no way. <laughs> That's serious, and he said yeah. they did. You know, you talk about signature wins. That's, this is the first really big signature win, and – uh for those that went to the game, those that watched the game, were pulling for the Jags. You'll never forget it. Oh yeah. And uh, actually, Definitely. you know what? I'm so proud. You know what I brought with what, me today? What you got there, John? For those of you that are listening, that is my that's my diploma, man, from the from the University of South Alabama. I've got one of those <laughs> somewhere. I got it from Look a there. Wizard and Oz. So I got I'm, one. I'm a Jag through and through. You are, man. And there's nothing wrong with being proud of it. And you yes. ought to be proud. I'm proud of the Jags. I didn't go to uh, mm-hmm. South Alabama, but being from around the Mobile area, just north of Mobile and Jackson, being from here, you can't help but be proud. Because listen, when you turn on the TV, that's who you see. That's yeah. who, there's every day they're going to be at practice at the Jags, and you and you want them to pull. You well, want them to, you want to pull for them. We've seen this program grow over the years. Mm-hmm. You know, we remember when it were when it was just a small program, and they were they, all their games were against teams and schools you never heard of. Well, I can remember when Joey Jones came on. I remember Joey Jones from being in Birmingham Southern, and I thought, man, he's going to do a good job if they'll just right. leave him alone and let him build it. Right. And it looks like things are going well. Well, and I remember last year it was a big deal because uh, Mississippi State came to Ladd Stadium yeah. to play South at home. It was a big deal. And that was a big deal because, you know, here it is. got an SEC team that's, at Ladd again. that's going on the road to play – USA, yeah, you know they're they're not just going to their place. They've got them coming coming to down. their place, and now a year here it is a year later, and they're able to beat them at their own home stadium. That's that's awesome. Well, I mean, more years Mississippi State will have the Jags <laughs> on their schedule after this. Yeah, they you might not see them on their schedule for, <laughs> for a little while, yeah, you and it, you see, might not see Auburn or Alabama on their schedule either. Yeah, because, you're right. Because uh, you know you you just don't want to you don't want to play with fire there. No. But uh, but it is it's an exciting moment for Jags football. It is, and uh, we're excited to see how they build off of this and, and where they go from here. Mobile loves Mobile is a football town. They've wanted this for so long, and, and you know when they first started the Jag program people thought well it's gonna take a long time to build it up and it has taken a while but you know what 
that's pretty cool that you can beat an SEC team in what year number three or four? Oh yeah, I mean, exactly. That's pretty awesome. Well, and here's here's the other thing. This is sort of the flip side of mm-hmm. that. As we look at you know a big upset like the Jags over over uh, Mississippi State. Yeah. It was not a good weekend overall for the SEC. Southeastern Conference overall kind of down. Kinda yeah. Down. Yeah, it was not the best of weekends, uh, and it started with Appalachian State versus Tennessee, even yeah. though Tennessee got a win. Tennessee got a win, but not one of those wins that they had hoped for <laughs> early on in the season. It was, a, no. it was a tough match, and they just won it in the end. Right, and you know that if they want to have the kind of season that they want to have, mm-hmm. they're going to have to get a lot better than what they showed Thursday night against Appalachian State. West Virginia beat Missouri. Yeah, not, not really a huge letdown there for me, but... The LSU game, John. That's yes. the one that got me. Yeah. You know, and you got to give it to them. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing to go that far and play a game. It but, but it's the first game of the season. you got to be better prepared to take on a team like Wisconsin. Well, it certainly was not one of those games like, you know, we had Alabama at USC. We'll get into that in a minute. It was, they were meeting kind of halfway in the middle of the country. Right, they right. went to Wisconsin's <laughs> home turf. That's right. Essentially. It right. wasn't their home stadium, but it was where the Lambeau right. Field and tough atmosphere, but LSU just could not pull it out, man. I thought really they would, but yeah, they didn't. Yeah, and they continue to have uh, problems with the pass game. Uh, Texas A&M got a pretty good victory against a uh, pretty good UCLA program. Yeah, they did. Uh, Arkansas struggled. Arkansas with pulled it out against La Tech, Tech. And them, but you know, Arkansas fans. I talked about that earlier in our in one of our other shows. They really have high expectations, and whew, La Tech almost. Made their beginning of the season tough. <laughs> yeah, almost finished the season before they started. Yeah, uh, Georgia was able to beat North Carolina, so that's good. Uh, Florida, even though the the final score was pretty good, they they struggle with uh, UMass for most of the game. They did, they did, and and, and you know you just don't expect that. You think mm-hmm. they're Florida and UMass <laughs> basketball struggle maybe right. You've got uh, Kentucky lost to Southern Miss, which. Not a big surprise, but you'd hope that Kentucky would be able to win that game. Hey, Southern Eagles starting out 1-0. Um, How about that? And we're going to get into Auburn and Alabama here in just a minute. Okay. But overall, not not the best way you want to start the SEC season. No, it was a tough start for the SEC. It was. And, and there was a lot of hoopla coming in, like big – I mean, there, were a lot, there was a lot of talk last week. SEC is going to fall big this week <laughs> on their face. Well, they didn't fall on their face. Mm-hmm. They did trip up and at least hit their knee. Yeah, they got bruised up pretty good. They did. <laughs> but they're still alive in, in uh, the big scheme of things in terms of uh, your big school like Alabama mm-hmm. rolling over USC. Alabama did well over USC. They started out kind of slow. But eventually he got the things rolling, and uh, it was just nasty in the end. Seriously, it wasn't even. <laughs> yeah, they made it, it him got look to the point. Where my dad, who never says this, said, "You know, this game's just getting boring." And it was like they third should, quarter. Yeah, they should just uh, pack it up and go home. At some point, they should have. Yeah, <laughs> call off the dogs. Well, last week we checked in with my brother-in-law mm-hmm. John Millington. Yeah, who's from Scotland, big time soccer fan. Now he calls it football, but. Yeah. We know what it is, really it's soccer. soccer. It's soccer. But anyway, he, uh, I, I told him, I said, look, pick any game you want to watch this weekend yeah. and then come back with a report. You know, I wanted to get his take on it because, you know, he's kind of an outsider looking in. Yeah. So maybe have a little bit different take. We can get point that out European something. feel yeah, to exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. We need to hear these, these types of things. So uh, I shot this with him earlier today. All right. And uh, we're going to check in with him and see what he thought about the Auburn-Clemson game. All right, everybody, fans down south, I'm John Miller, and uh, with me is John Millington, my brother-in-law. Hello. He's from Scotland, and so he's not really used to college football, but he's learning. Are you enjoying the sport more? I am. I'm enjoying it. It's, I love the action, mm-hmm. and I love – there's nothing quite like – it reminds me of football sometimes when a quarterback throws a great pass, just a long great pass, yeah, right through the eye and needle, right into somebody's hands. That's brilliant. I mean, it's amazing. It gets the, the blood pumping, you know. But commercial breaks. The commercial, commercial breaks. Commercial breaks. Lots of commercial. Right. Now, now you actually you took a lot of notes. I took a lot of notes. I'm not going to get to go through now, them show all. Me. <laughs> because you made the note of how many commercial breaks. I, I how many commercial down, breaks? Tally. Do we have? And this, I'm not counting. During halftime, and I'm not counting 
or uh, uh, during the quarter breaks because that's fine. That's get mm-hmm. your get right. your advertisement. Right. Right. But during the game, when yes. that wee guy with the red hat comes on the pitch, <laughs> the killjoy, he's had eighteen breaks. Eighteen breaks. Eighteen commercial breaks, and I think that. That well, one yeah. is really annoying. Yeah, because I don't want to buy anything they're selling. Right? <laughs> Two, it can really that must really affect the teams, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're I, getting in a rhythm, yeah, and then they're like, "Hey, stop! We got to sell some soap here." Yeah, we got to sell some dog biscuits. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? There's just something, and they're not even relevant adverts. They're just adverts <laughs> that are just all over the place. Like, you're not even going to sell me chicken wings. <laughs> They're going to sell me some nonsense. I don't mean. But 18. Well, you have some more generic notes here to start off. <laughs> what, tell, now, tell us. <laughs> number one. Your number one note here. Well, number one your first note, one. Number one note, and this is very important to everybody. Perfect game food is Kaneka dog and chili. <laughs> Kaneka dog and chili. Kaneka dog is good. That so gets that, you in the mood for that is, college that's football. That's good football. That's good football food. That's good sport food. Right? <laughs> number two is number, important too. Number two is yes. maybe the most important one, especially for the guys out there. Right? No mother-in-law should be empowered off remote control. Don't let them, Don't let them do that. <laughs> the remote control. Pause, rewind, pause, rewind. No. Uh, that's infuriating. Again, that's yeah. like almost as bad as the commercials. Yes. You're watching that, you're built up, you're ready for the next right. play to see what's going to happen, right. and then they pause. Well, now give us some overall notes on the game itself. Because right. uh, Auburn, there were there were a few good things to take away, but there yeah. were a lot of negatives, negatives. too. So what, what, did you, what were your... Uh, right, all right, first of all, I like Auburn, and I don't want to annoy everybody. Right? <laughs> I'm just going to try and tell the game how I see it. Yeah, you I, wanted them to do well. I want Auburn to do yes. well. I live in a house with Auburn fans. You know, all my in-laws are Auburn fans, so it kind of makes me... Yeah, by default. By default, you're by an, default, Auburn an Auburn fan. fan, right? <laughs> so I want you to do... I like old Miss. <laughs> uh, I want to see last year, for last year to this year, I thought last year you had a problem with quarterback. Right. And I wanted to see if there was progress there. And because I think that's important. You need to progress. You need to look at the mistakes you made last year and fix them. Right. right? That's the point. And yeah. Right? That's, what, that's what you've got to do. So I was looking at Johnson versus White. White, he can do some good throws, but he's terrible. And in fact... <laughs> He's too slow. He's too uh, slow. It just, I just feel like if he's, when he's pressured, it doesn't react well, mm-hmm. you know. And when Johnson was on, the team seemed to have a higher tempo. They seemed a wee bit more aggressive and a wee bit more passionate than they did when he was White was on the pitch. Right, right. I mean, so now let's let's just imagine for a minute. You're talking to Gus Malzahn. Right. You're 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 talking to the coach. <laughs> what do you tell Gus Malzahn about how how does how do we fix this? What do we need to do? I'm not sure to make this better. But Gus is interested in what I've got to say on, <laughs> but I'll tell you anyway, Mr. Yeah. Malzahn. Tell uh, us. I think he's played a lot better at a higher tempo. So play at a higher tempo and play more aggressive. And because every time he's done that, he's been getting you know, a lot more joy. For the game, when you were kept on going at them and going at them, and that was he's played much better. But as soon as you slowed it down, then that wasn't great. You lost possession. Your defense were having to work extra hard because <coughs> they were on quicker. Uh, so maybe try and keep it. I don't know who I am to tell it. <laughs> keep it faster. Yeah, keep it. Keep the pace. Keep there, the buddy. pace. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, the quarterback situation. The quarterback situation needs to be sorted out if he's going to stand a chance. When you look how good. Clemson's quarterback and receiver were playing. Oh, yeah. In comparison to how good yours were, you know, now that's a big difference. And he's, if that shows you the gap between the two sides, in my opinion, that was a gap between the right. two sides. I mean, they never, they never give you a really bad beating because your defence played well. So right, the right. Defence is all good. <laughs> you just need to sort that out, Gus. So we got to sort it out. Sort it out, Gus. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> I like you, Gus. He's a nice guy. I guess we trust. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, next time we'll, you know, we'll get out the Koneka dogs. Yeah. We'll make sure the mother-in-law doesn't Go have the remote. Hide that. 
Uh, and uh, and maybe we'll have a better game for yeah, you. Yeah, you will do. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Especially after Gus Rose on takes my advice. Yes. <laughs> All right, we well, hope you're watching, Gus. <laughs> Cheers. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're back, and uh, we're going to talk Auburn for a minute. Okay. So, uh, now, I actually got to watch most of the game. I was uh, I missed the first part because I was at a wedding. Yeah. But uh, the uh, I got to come back and watch, like I said, most of it. And uh, I will say, first of all, I was impressed with the defense. I mm-hmm. thought the defense overall did a, a pretty good job. I thought special teams did a really good job. Yeah. I have no idea what was going on on offense. The addition of Kevin Steele will be the new story for Auburn this week. Yeah, You're right. I mean, they're bringing him in. He he did an incredible job game planning for that game and yeah. personnel and everything. But you're right, offensively, what in the world? I have no idea. And actually, you know what? On our Facebook page, we got a little response here from Uncle Henry. He yeah. wanted to know what was Gus Malzahn trying to do with the quarterback situation. I have no idea. That's sort of outside of my pay grade, Uncle Henry. I I. I can't really it's answer that. a good question, that. though. I mean, a lot of people ask that mm-hmm. question. I had a guy, a friend of mine, was uh, he's, a, he's a preacher, he's an mm-hmm. Auburn fan, and he mm-hmm. said, I prepared my sermon for tomorrow morning, and he said, I've got three of them picked. I'm just going <laughs> to rotate them throughout the morning. So, Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> if one doesn't seem to be working, we'll yeah, just, we'll, we can just we'll pull put in the other sermon. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's sort of what was going on. Uh, the best I can tell, you know, I think, I think they had a plan. To be fair, John? Yeah, yes. I think they had a plan. I think the plan wasn't working. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, I think the plan just became, let's just see if we can confuse Clemson <laughs> <laughs> by you know rotating these quarterbacks around. Well, I think, to be fair, the, uh-huh. the, uh, the Alabama plan was pretty much the same. They, yeah. they had three quarterbacks in the game. I think theirs just seemed to – it yeah. worked out better. Yeah. It could have been the same story yeah. in Alabama. Well, and I think the flip side of that is you could – he could have uh, you know stayed with the starting quarterback mm-hmm. and – you know, and then if it didn't work out, people would be saying, "Well, it wasn't working. Why did he, you know, keep him in why the whole?" Stay with why him? Did, yeah. I don't know, but uh, but it was it was foul. a lot of rotation. A lot of people crying <laughs> foul on Jeremy Johnson this week. I don't know. I've heard it. What they they're not happy with him. I just heard a lot of people talking well, about that. I don't really, I don't, you know, but I don't really blame him because he came in as the second yeah. quarterback. I mean. Yeah. You know, nobody nobody really expected him to be the guy. I'm not blaming because I didn't even watch enough of the game. I'm just saying what I heard people people were saying. You know, I, I didn't even I got to see parts of it and I watched the end of it. Um, but well, and we never really got to see much of John Franklin III. He came in the game, he kept feeling like there was so much more to come from him. Yeah, and I didn't really because he's got such a powerful yeah. running ability. And I wonder if if maybe just part of it is they just didn't have you know enough of the the playbook. You know, in his, you know, brain, in his brain yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, yeah. if you're preparing for one guy to be the starter, yeah. You know, maybe they didn't really anticipate on really playing him that much, and then it could turned be. into a situation where they really probably could have used him. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens uh, this coming week with Arkansas State mm-hmm. coming to town. Yeah. And uh, I think it'll be a good, I think it'll be a good test for them and a and a good opportunity for this offense to maybe find some sort of rhythm and identity. And there's no doubt they got talent there. They just got to jail and get moving in the right direction. So we'll see yeah. what happens this week. Now we talked a little bit about Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do want to dig into their quarterback situation because maybe that was the biggest. You know, outside of the blowout, yeah, <laughs> maybe that was the second biggest story. Was you know what's going on with the quarterback situation? Is the true freshman going to be the guy? Well, it looks like it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, just just from from all accounts. I mean, we don't know. Saban's certainly not going to tip us that to that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and you got you know you've got that's not necessarily a uh, super strong team coming in this week. I think. Kent State, who we played this week, and it's not going to be. No, no, actually, they're playing uh, sorry, Western Kent Kentucky. State, Western Kentucky, you're right, the Hilltoppers. You're right. Forgot about that. This is the same team that tripped over themselves coming out of the run yeah, through, isn't it? Which wasn't a good showing for them, really. But I'll maybe listen. they'll feel, fare better against Alabama than they did the run through. But all honesty, my favorite mascot, maybe of all, it's like a red grimace. Remember he grimace from like McDonald's? Grimace. He's he like does. a red grimace. I love that guy. He looks like a red. But grimace. yeah, so the Hilltoppers coming in, you won't really see. I don't think we really have an answer as yeah. far as who's going to be Bama's mm-hmm. st- stable That's quarterback. True. But you got—I got to admit, man—he looked great. He really did. You know, you got to figure if if they let—is uh, it Jalen Hurts? Jalen Hurts. If they let him play pretty much the entire game, mm-hmm. then you got to figure that's sort of the tip of the hat to 
where they're going because they're going to be looking. If he's going to be the guy, they're going to yeah. be looking to give him playing time, giving him. He'll experience. certainly get the time. They're not going to leave him in there for a game life, especially yeah. if they run the score up. If it keeps going up, yeah. they're not, they're going to pull. And, and Barnett mm-hmm. uh, started out the game for Alabama. Blake Barnett came out and looked just not very stable, and so they pulled him and put Hertz in, which was probably the plan anyway. But then Hertz just looked so phenomenal, and then they put Barnett back in. He throws two long passes for touchdowns and looks like an All-American. So, yeah. And he is an All-American, but I don't know, man. It's, well, it's a question mark. You'll have to forgive me because, I, like I said, I didn't get to see much of the Alabama game because, mm-hmm. one, I was at a wedding, and, two, the Auburn game was on. But yeah. did Cooper Bateman play? He did. He, he did. came out there and played and looked okay. How did, yeah, how did he look? He looked, he looked all right. Yeah. He looked all right. He wasn't – he didn't have the moments that the first two quarterbacks did, though. He didn't, of course, he didn't have really time. He came out the very end of the game. I think my wife counted four, three plays. Yeah, three plays. She <laughs> she's was sitting like, over. She, well, I say she's sitting. She's laying. She's laying now. She's tired. <laughs> she picked three plays. She said, uh-huh. "She said poor Cooper only got three plays, and he did. He got three yeah. plays, but he'll get some more chances to play. And he's, you know, what he was doing good was had that clipboard holding on tight to it <laughs> over there on the sideline. Well. You got to own it if you're going to do he it. You got to own it. He did do that. All right, so let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for the SEC this week. Okay, and uh, we kind of talked about it just a little bit, mm-hmm. but let's just look at some key games. We got SEC play between Kentucky and Florida. That ought to be interesting. It'll be on Should CBS. Be. Um, Upset alert right here, John. What you got? LSU and Jack State. <laughs> Seriously, think so. I mean, I'm really well. You know, be. Jacksonville State didn't they? Uh, they beat what Ole Miss a few years ago. They're not a slouch. They came in and and uh, took Auburn to overtime. Was that last year? Yeah, I think that was last year. So you're right. It could be a, a little bit of a contest there. South Carolina, Mississippi State. It's a big game. That ought to be a good game because you know uh, South Carolina actually won their opener against Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. and so they're actually, believe it or not. Since we haven't really started the SEC season, yeah. they're sitting on top of the SEC <laughs> world. They're, <crazy. laughs> they're like one and oh. Everybody else is O and O. They're one and O. Yeah. Um, and this, uh, you know, I'm interested to see how this game's going to turn out. TCU versus Arkansas. It's going to be at TCU and be on ESPN. And that might be uh, one of the more intriguing games over the weekend. Cause, I think it is. How does how does Arkansas stop TCU? Right. And you got to think, when they struggled against La Tech, maybe they're looking ahead just a little bit maybe. to the TCU game. What do you think about that Tennessee-Virginia Tech game? That's going to be an exciting game, and uh, they're, they're it's playing be a spectacle. that. spectacle. Yeah. How many fans did they say they're going to have at that thing? About 150,000 is what wow. I heard. That is huge. It's be at Bristol Motor Speedway, and they've been talking about that game for years. It's been yeah. talked about between Tennessee and, and uh, mm-hmm. Virginia mm-hmm. Tech as far as, man, because it sits kind of right in the center of those two two schools, and huge recruiting ground in that area and they've always talked about what what would happen if we put a game here and everybody's like ah, i don't ever happen and now it's happening <laughs> yeah and it seems like that's two good teams to put in there two solid programs with mm-hmm. solid fan bases definitely and uh i think you know maybe maybe we caught those two teams looking ahead just a little bit i'd like to quote a tennessee fan good. that said if we play like we did last we can get our butts handed to us that's what he said <laughs> but you know virginia tech uh uh, they they kind of struggled over the weekend too. Yeah. They ended up winning, but they didn't they they didn't look that sharp. In I don't the think win. it'll be a problem getting motivated mm-hmm. for this game. They've been talking about it for a year, yeah, you know, more than a year. But but for yeah. for sure that was on the schedule. They've been talking about it, and I think it's it's going to be a not only is it going to be a big TV event. It'll be uh, just I mean because it is. It's going to be a lot of people watching just to see one hundred fifty thousand right. fans watching a game. Right. Um, it'll be they fun. should make it more interesting by having, uh, you know professional race car drivers go around the track during the game that's true that yep. would make it even more of a spectacle they hadn't thought it out yet <laughs> get Burton smith and the crew up there at bristol a little time they'll get it together i mean if you have a crash and an in- injury at the same time you know just imagine or or the uh players after touchdowns have mandatory pit stops <laughs> mandatory seriously rotate some tires yeah yeah whatever it takes Make it interesting. Why not? So you wanted to, before we get out of here, you had something you wanted to add to this week's show. I did. What, what, now, what did you want to talk about? Well, I guess it just came from your brother-in-law mm-hmm. there talking about mm-hmm. all that connect. It got me mm-hmm. thinking. Yeah. Man, if you just, the the, the treat for this week. Yeah, every treat every week, you got it. We're going to have it the, the tailgate treat of the week. Okay. All right. All right. What you got? That's real original. I just came up with it <laughs> just that quick. This week, and I got this from a, from a local restaurant. I won't mention it, but I just got the idea. I thought about mm-hmm. it. Koneka sausage, or your favorite kind of sausage, which, by the way, 
I don't know. I, I just like Conecuh. I like other kinds, too. I like Monroe. I like other brands. Not just mm-hmm. sold on Conecuh, but I do like it a lot. Conecuh sauce, it's dusted with some dry rub, whatever kind of barbecue dry rub you like. You can make your own if you want to, with good old American sweaty hoop cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah. What? Hoop cheese. Hoop cheese and sausage <laughs> on a platter. You could throw all that fancy vegetable stuff in there like peppers and celery and okay. junk like that. Right. I won't eat make it. it. Make it healthy. Yeah, yeah. But but put some sweaty hoop cheese okay. and some Koneka sausage. Just grill it. I don't care. You can bake it. You can put brown sugar on it. I don't care what you do. <laughs> but you got to have sausage and hoop cheese. What a perfect game day appetizer. All right. Well, That's maybe it. we should put a recipe. We should get a recipe from you for for future shows. We'll we can do put it. on the website or something. every week. The tailgate treat of the week. So let's check in with our uh, Facebook Live audience. Uh, we got Johnny Gwynn out there. What's up, Johnny? And uh, Johnny wants to know. Did, now, first of all, I have to apologize once again with this weddings. The weddings they throw me off. Yeah, yeah. I had to go to a wedding this weekend, but he wants to know about. The LSU blind side in the game. Yeah. And also the groin stomp. And I guess that's from the USC Alabama game, right? It was. Both of those. What Do you have any thoughts on that? Our opinions on it? Yeah. Well, the, on the LSU thing, the offensive lineman was just absolutely frustrated and ran up there. And moronic play when it comes. I say moronic play. I wasn't out there in the heat of the moment. I'm just saying when it cost your team like it did, right. uh, it just wasn't a very smart thing to do. Uh, I'm not in the heat of the moment like that, and you just don't want to see that. There's no way you can not call that play. Mm-hmm. No mm-hmm. way you can not throw the flag, and right. no way you can't eject him from the game. It was blatant. It really could have hurt the player bad. It did hurt him, but it really could have been a lot worse than it was. Yeah. Uh, the groin stomp, it was just – I mean, there's no excuse for that. that that's just well, – we've all – if you played football, you've all been under the pile. You've all been bit and stomped and twisted ankle and anything mm-hmm. else under there. Cause it's, it's a dangerous mm-hmm. place. But when you're in a wide open – and you just take your foot with a cleat and stomping a man's groin. <laughs> anybody with any kind, anybody that's ever been a man's gonna throw a flag on that. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was crazy, and there was no sense in it. Yeah, uh, you, you understand. And the things. coaches would agree. I mean, they oh, yeah. tell them all the time. Well, Don't yeah, do there's, this. There's I mean, nobody arguing about the right. fact that it shouldn't have been called. Right. That's insane. You can't right. do that. It's, it's right. and it potentially hurts a player hmm. or the player's future kids. <laughs> That's just saying <laughs> the possibility of future yeah, kids exactly now i had uh i had a few people reach out to me this week very concerned fans mm-hmm. last week we talked about the baby draft i told you you did about i Never told you about that until last week yeah well we had to get out a calendar and mm-hmm. go through auburn and alabama's schedules and you told me you yeah. told me they were going to be dressed the same yes and they were not well now but you didn't see – here, we'll, we'll post the picture. I'm but, sorry. Okay. But they were. They were dressed – they were both dressed in the, you know, the red and white team. Oh, okay. And uh, – It's okay. You can say Alabama, John. <laughs> sorry. And, and they were – and okay. it, it was actually posted on Facebook against mm-hmm. my, you know, wishes. Oh, okay. Which I was not happy about that. Okay. But the concern that people had was they wanted to know a little bit more about the schedule. Uh, I had a few Alabama fans. Mm-hmm. They wanted to know. They were like, "Now, what about what about Tennessee and yeah. and LSU? You know, we got to make sure we get those games." So I will put uh, some of those concerns to ease. Mm-hmm. My wife, she did get the Tennessee game. She got the Tennessee game for the okay. kids because Auburn, Alabama, is, Auburn is off on that weekend. Yeah, and LSU. They got LSU, too, because we're playing Vanderbilt. I didn't fight yeah. for the Vanderbilt game. No, I don't game. fight for Vandy. Um, now, my key games that I wanted was, of course, LSU. Yeah. And uh, I want a Mississippi State. Okay. Because I've noticed that the years when Auburn does not beat Mississippi State, mm-hmm. those are bad years. All right. So we got to get that one. It's a John Miller call we right there. We have to get that. And I want a Georgia. So I was able to get all of those. And you can see this was uh, – this was given to me. You're this, listening this. to the radio, John, showing a schedule right now. <laughs> I am. I'm showing the schedule where we mark the, the games. But this was given to me by my mom's boyfriend. Okay. Who works at Wesco. All right. And, uh, it's a nice anyway, schedule, by the way. So we keep this on the on the refrigerator so we can keep up with who has what You weekends. never said who gets it for the Iron Bowl. How's that work? Well, the Iron Bowl is sort of a split thing. We, okay. Uh, the last two years, Caroline has worn a uh, 
sort of an Auburn, Alabama outfit. Hmm. And so we're going to do something like that this year. We okay. haven't really decided. All right. It's but, not biblical, uh, but whatever. That's fine. <laughs> and so. we're still trying to get up with our, our minister to do some counseling yeah, that's over happen. this situation. That's ridiculous. We need some prayer. So, but anyway, so we're about to get out of here. Yeah. We appreciate y'all tuning in. And uh, as always, you can call us, 251-281-8844. You can email us, fansdownsouth at gmail.com. And uh, you can go on our website. Yeah, be a part of the show. It makes it a lot more fun whenever you interact with us, especially on Facebook Live or mm -hmm. the uh, phone line. And uh, give us a call, leave a message, and uh, we'll put you on there. If there's something we like or something we don't like, we'll put it on there. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we hope you all enjoy this weekend's games, and uh, we'll see you next time right here on Fans Down South.